Oh, Gold Derby fans, this actor's role made a surprise comeback from the dead in season three of Westworld. I'm Sam McMahon of Gold Derby. With me is Simon Quarterman. Thanks so much for, for sitting down with me, Simon. Um, yeah. this, this role obviously was a huge surprise, I think, for many fans when you came back, a pleasant surprise, because you were gunned down in season two. Um, so we didn't quite expect to see you again, um, but we're very happy we did. So I imagine it was somewhat of a surprise for you. What was your reaction when you found out you were coming back? Yeah, I had a, um, I had a small inkling. Um, just at the end of season two, um, Jonah and Lisa, and as you know, um, they're pretty good with, um, you know, with a few breadcrumbs here and there. And uh, they kind of insinuated that he, it might not be the last time that we saw Lee, but that was kind of where it was left. But um, I found out, um, oh God, a while ago now, you know, about six months before we started shooting, mm -hmm. I found out that. I was coming back, but I had no idea in what capacity, and I thought that somehow he miraculously survived this hail of bullets, but uh, that was not to be. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find out sort of the details uh, about your return beforehand, before you get a script, how many it's going to be, what the job is going to be like? Uh, well, I found out, um, on the, I got brought in for rehearsals with Tandy, and um, I got, uh, and Lisa asked to see me. So she sat me down and I d didn't have the script at that point. So she sat me down and um, she explained what was going to be happening in episode two. And, uh, you know, as an actor, you, you know, you go through all these scenarios that, that could possibly happen, I guess, you know, um, that, maybe Lee survived somehow and he's helping. I, I didn't really know. I mean, I, I mean, I, I tried, but uh, <laughs> I did not in any way think for one moment that he, he was now a computer program and a simulation that, that didn't really enter into my mind at all. Right. It's, um, it's a bit of a complicated scenario. He finds himself in the way he's surviving now. Um, and, uh, Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy have are, are infamous for creating this very sprawling uh, story and landscape. So, yeah. did they kind of sit you down and give you any details of, of the overall plot of this series no. or of the season, or are you just blind? No. blind? I've been finding out as I've been watching. <laughs> I've been, you know, wow. that's um, generally as a, uh, as an actor in the in the show and as a regular on the show, you you'll get the episode and you'll get to read the episode that you're in but um the rest of it if you're if you're not in those episodes then you you won't be you won't be given a, a script so which kind of worked out um well i think for for where lee is at this season because he's more of a satellite mm -hmm. uh, than someone who's engaged in all of the you know, the, the real world drama, which he was, you know, which he kind of enjoyed participating in when he was alive. But uh, now that he's not, it's, you know, it's, uh, he's, he's somewhat removed from it. So not knowing what was happening in the rest of the season, actually, it was quite helpful. Yeah, they, they are very good at keeping their, their secrets. Yes. Um, how does that, because you, essentially, then you kind of have to fly blind with a lot of aspects of the greater story. How does that affect uh, your work as an actor? Does that change how you approach no, uh, um, the scenes? Not, not really. I think it brings, for me, a little more immediacy to, to, um, to our work, not really knowing what's happening from one moment to the next, really. And you don't really have a huge amount of time with the script before we start shooting, which, which I like actually it's it's it, uh you know you 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 can uh you know the, the less the mind's engaged with it all the kind of better i feel and uh you can just just do it instead of uh overthinking things mm -hmm. and i think i read um back to lisa and john's secrets uh one of the ones that you got to keep i think you met um the game of thrones showrunners in their crazy cameo did you get to meet david and tv i did very briefly yeah we met um we were i think we were shooting 
shooting something. We were in for her rehearsals, and uh, yeah, we happened to to be there when they they shot that little scene, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so we've seen with Lee like such a transformation uh, yep. with him since his introduction in season one. He was a much more cocky uh, guy, and it's simulation. He plays all. There's a lot of different stuff that's been programmed into him. It's mm -hmm. uh, as if he's a host now. He's romantic, trying to be romantic towards Maeve. He has another um, objective from this other man, Serac. And how do you sort of um, how do you keep your character consistent while you're playing all these different facets of him? Yeah, I think even though um, he's now a simulation in this season, I still had to, for me, there's still been an arc to his development. Um, and like you said, in the, in the first season, we see him and he's, a, you know, pretty wrapped up in himself mm -hmm. and um, incredibly narcissistic mm -hmm. and he's just out for himself and you know, and relationships that he has are, are very transactional in nature, you know, it's whatever that that person can bring him and his desire for, um, you know, for, for more domination in, in, in Westworld and Delos. Um, season two, we, we kind of see that being rocked with all of that. So I think over the, over the, the, the three seasons, we've, we've seen a kind of deconstruction really of his identity to get into the season three where you know he's dropped the biggest bomb which is that he's not who he thinks he is at all so um it, it, i still think even though he's dead and he is a an approximation and a program that's been created by serac there's still um there's still a through line for his character which which has been really interesting to to play, particularly this this season, because as you as you noted, it um, there's these new things that have been programmed within him, but there's still um, just like the hosts, there's still the opportunity for him to um, come off those rails and to find, mm -hmm. you know, and to find uh, new directions i guess you know that he can create himself which is kind of kind of interesting yeah something that was really new you know the the former cocky lee sizemore was always in control he was the human he had control creating the narratives the whole part and now um it's really fun to watch may have sort of deconstruct your whole reality and now like a host you have to question your reality what was it like playing the flip side of that equation yeah um Fun, fun. It, it, yeah, it's, it's such a, it's such a kind of like a deep, you know, the grappling. It feels to me with quite some quite deep um, themes, really, about you know what it is that we think we are, or in Lee's case, who he thinks he is, and uh, and Maeve being the catalyst and him discovering that he's not that. And so what, what is he underneath all of that, I guess, is, is the question I've kind of posed myself with Lee this season. What is it, what's underneath all of that? And I guess we kind of see him come to a place, um, particularly at the end of the episode two, where really he comes into a place of acceptance, I guess. And so it's, it's been a, yeah, it's a, from someone so in control to all of that control just being, you know, just blasted wide open. It's been fun to play. And a lot of your, uh, most of your scenes are with Maeve. Um, even before this, you shared a lot of scenes with her. How has that relationship between Lee and Maeve evolved for you? Do you find that same evolution still possible while you're simulation? Oh, yeah, totally. I think in, a, in yeah, it's, <laughs> he, he had to, um, this season, come to, uh, realize that you know that he's not in uh, love with her even though he's been programmed that he had to break away from from that but uh you know from day one the, there's such two such interesting characters to be paired together i feel and uh, they they both i think kind of been helping each other grow in one way or another throughout the the, the two seasons that they've been together so yeah it's been a, it's been an awful lot of fun to play and it, and it's even in death even in his death, there's 
there's still growth to be had. Mm -hmm. And uh, you and Tandy Newton work so well off of one another, and you're there for these incredibly highly emotional moments for each other. What What is she like as a scene partner? Oh, she's ridiculous. I mean, she's, she's honestly just so much fun to uh, such a generous, generous actor and um, just a, an all round pretty amazing human being, to be honest. So we, we've just had a ball from day one, really. It was, uh, I think the very first scene that we shot together was actually the very first time when Lee and Maeve see, um, see each other in the, the start of uh, season two, ep episode one. We actually shot that first. So it was, a, it, was, it was lovely shooting that scene straight off the bat. And, um, and it really created a great foundation for the rest of our work together. And, you know, we've, we've become very close and really great friends throughout this whole process too. It's just been a joy, it really has. And I was, uh, speaking of your introduction this season, I was wondering, do you follow along with any of the sort of online nope. theorizing and speculation? Nope. <laughs> no speculation for you? No, no, I don't. I kind of gave up. I've never really been that interested in it. No. There's, so. There was a wild one that people thought perhaps Anthony Hopkins Ford was part of your code because you came out with a cane and oh. had a similar Ford uh, mannerism or something. So lots of people were had lots of speculation about you. <laughs> who knows? I mean, like, who knows? You know, this show, it could go anywhere which way. I have no idea, you know? It's, but yeah, that's, that's kind of fun sounding. <laughs> I, I do... I thought myself, no. <laughs> I, I do think you have one of the most used memes and gifts in all of Westworld fandom with the the, the relentless fucking experience. Oh, yes. uh, it, it's all over. Do, does that like, what is the fan reaction like? Do you encounter people saying that to you? I've probably had one. <laughs> I don't think I've had anyone say it to me. I'm so, I'm so like, you know, I keep myself away from all of that, like what people think and and what people um, say, I, I really do, you know, but I, so I have no idea. But that's kind of fun, it's a great line. Yeah, and, and it makes for a great meme. Exactly. I think what I was it? Addition, uh, the relentless fucking experience, and, the, and the, I think I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. <laughs> uh, and your audition, I think I read you originally auditioned for Bernard. I did. Is that I mean I'm not necessarily sure that maybe I was in serious contention for that at all. I think it was maybe just the, the, uh, those were the sides that were handy, perhaps. I'm not too sure. Um, but I, I, did, um, I did read for Bernard and, and I, met with, I met with Jonah and, um, and John, the, the, the casting director. And, you know, Jonah and I got on really well. And then about a month later, um, I got called in for Lee and uh, so, as soon as I kind of read the uh, read it there was a it was a, it, one of his you know rants basically mm -hmm. so uh, as soon as I saw it I was like I felt kind of comfortable and I, I'm not entirely sure what it says about me but um, it did feel very comfortable to do so we, we, had, we had a lot of fun in the audition when I saw him last um, after that and then um, yeah then it was then about a month later you know I, I got the role well, I, I'm curious because now we know that there's possibility for you always to come back to exist as a yeah. virtual um, person and who knows with Westworld they can create anything they want to bring anyone back. So um, looking ahead to season four because the show is renewed, if you were to be brought back in some capacity, what's kind of your hope for, for Lee? Is there anything else you want to explore with him or that you think would be a fun road to take him down? I have no idea. I mean, I really have no idea. It's, I'm, I'm kind of like in the same place where I was finishing season two. And, um, but, but in this, in this case, I, I really have no idea. I, I, and, and where the show is going, I, listen, those, those minds that Lisa and Jonah have are just, I, I have no idea what's knocking about in there. And um, I wouldn't, wouldn't even like to prophesize. I, I have no clue. I, and, um, but they, I'm sure if Lee does come back, they'll cook up something pretty interesting, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, we'll all uh, cross our fingers for another, for another dip into the virtual world for another look at Lee in, in a yeah. future season. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone at home who's watching, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby and keep in touch with us for Emmy season. And, and thank you so much, Simon, for talking with me. 
Yeah, you got it. It's a pleasure.